Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. An inner bond among souls is the strongest among all bonds exist in this universe and is as old as our universe. Um, if you look at like um, in the last lecture, we basically discuss about heat of formation and heat of reaction and heat of combustion. Then we learned how to calculate the heat of reaction from the heat of formation. And then knowing the heat of reaction, we also calculated the heat of combustion. And uh, keep in mind that we are using heat of combustion and the calorie value interchangeably. right? And we also uh, learned how to uh, estimate the lower heating values and lower calorie values or lower heating values or higher calorie values right and uh, if you look at like we basically uh, determine the heat of reaction from heat of formation right that means those things will be available in the table now suppose there is a situation where those tables or the data of the heat of formation a tabular form or any other is not available. Let us say you are developing a new compound right? where you know the uh, you do not have data. So, how we are going to do that is a question. right? So, for that what we will use we will basically use the bond energy right? and then calculate the heat of reaction. So, a question might be coming to your mind, what is bond energy? Of course, you know very well because bond energy was uh, taught to you in plus 2 very extensively. I will be not discussing about that, but I will just try to make you to uh, recall that bond energy is basically the certain amount of energy right? that is being used to break or form a chemical bond. right? And um, we know that uh, the chemical reaction means the breaking of bond or forming of new bonds, right? Breaking of old bonds are the, uh, or breaking of bonds are the forming of new bonds. So, therefore, that is the energy, amount of energy which is required basically to have a bond between the, you know, um, elements. And you might be knowing like uh, just now, you know, yesterday we had Independence Day, right? We are having lot of energy, lot of money we spend for celebration of Independence Day. What for? That is basically to reinforce the bond between the individual and the country, right? What is known as patriotism, am I right? So, to have because nowadays internationalization is there therefore you know a lot of these things beside this also you should have some kind of obligation for your nation so that is also a what you call patriotism one form of bond right so you are having also what you call bond with your family yes or no right of course there are various forms of bonds are there in uh, chemical reaction covalent bond ionic bond, hydrogen bond, you know like kind of things. So, uh, but how does it really form and why energy is required? Let us imagine that there are two H atom, right? And when you talk about the atom, there will be nuclear, there will be electrons, right? And these are very far apart. That means, they, they are not interacting with each other. They will be very far apart, right? Okay. And of course, the bond is strengthened whenever there will be interaction. Like, for example, in ancient time, the people were far apart, there is no interaction, right. For example, when I 
uh, went to my engineering college you know i don't have an interaction with my parents except writing a letter but today you are having more interaction that means more bond is it so do you have better bond <laughs> than what it was previously of course that is a debatable thing we will not discuss now coming back to this that this um, that will be having you know zero energy we are considering that there is no interaction therefore it will be having zero energy here and as this you know atom will be coming closer right what will be happening that means there will be interaction between the nucleus and the electron of other hydrogen atom and also there will be interaction between nucleus to nucleus right so therefore there will be you know when they are coming there will be two forces which will be acting what are those two forces one is the attraction or the cohesion you call it, right other is repulsive forces in this case as they will be closer to each other then attractive forces will be stronger repulsive forces will be weaker right until what will happen it will be coming to a minimum label right which is happens to be for this that is uh, hydrogen molecule will be formed because that is the uh, lowest overall energy of the system and the distance of course the optimum right and that distance is known as bond length right in this case it happens to be 74 picometer and the energy whatever is there is 7.24 into 10 power to minus 19 joule this is too small energy isn't it this is too small energy so if it is there then what will happen like that will be the strongest bond will be formed like bond will be formed in that case you know like um, you can say that the separation distance is the optimum one right and um, this amount of energy is found but you know what we will do with this this is too small energy but when you talk about this bond energy is basically will be in terms of mole right whenever we will talking will be in terms of moles and you might be knowing according to the Avogadro's you know um, uh, number right what is Avogadro's number is basically at 6.23 into 10 power to 23 molecules per mole at standard temperature and pressure but what will be the volume volume will be 22.7 liter right so what i am saying then but we will be more interested not that a single uh, hydrogen molecule is being formed by the from the two this thing or any other things but rather we will be talking about in terms of moles so the bond is often discussed on a per mole basis so average bond energy for hh bond will be 436 kilojoule per mole it is a quite a you know uh, large amount of energy per mole keep in mind that this bond energy is you know will be different than the dissociation bond energy okay what we will be interested more interested in the average bond energy right i will take an example of methane right so uh, let us say the methane you know CH4 right and CH4 from that you know one H atom is being extracted as a result there will be CH3 and H right right CH4 will be let us say getting into CH3 plus H then what will be the because one hydrogen you know bond is being dissociated right so what will be amount of energy that is required is something 435 kilojoule per mole right but if we go for the next one that is cs3 will be converted into cs2 plus h right then what will happen that will be 438 kilojoule per mole and again similarly if it is cs2 ch plus h then it will be uh, something uh, 438 kilojoule per mole and in the last one of course that will be 
uh, C and H that will be 339 kilojoule per mole. But if you take average of that, you know, because all are CH bond, right? If you take average, what you will get? You will get something 414 kilojoule per mole, right? And that we will be using. But individually, the dissociation that will be different, right? So you should keep uh, that difference in your mind. And of course, uh, the table should be available in the bond energy of various kinds of bonds, right? Um, and those are being estimated and uh, tabulated, and we can use that. If you look at this, is given these are the H H bond. Of course, there will be single bond, there will be double bond, and you know some triple bond are there also. Various thing, and these are uh, bond length in picometer is given, and these are energy which is given, like. H H 436 S C or C H you know S C or C H whatever you call right 414 like that it goes uh, and similarly C O and other uh, various bonds are given keep in mind that when you use the C O 2 right and uh, that will be you have to when it is a C O 2 basically C O bond the C O 2 you will have to use 799 kilojoule per mole that is being you know given. So, what we will do, we can use this kind of data of the bond energies, right, and estimate the heat of reaction, right, instead of using the heat of formation, where we will be using that basically when those heat of formations are not available, right, where suppose you have developed a new compound, right, where you do not have enough data or you do not, you cannot really uh, measure the, you know, calorific value, let us say that compound you cannot use in a bump calorimeter or a younger calorimeter you know and then find out. So, naturally you will have to use this kind of thing to check how much you know heat of reactions or heat of combustion is there or calorie value of a any uh, fuel. So, let us look at uh, one mole of methane is reacting with the oxygen in stoichiometric ratio right. Determine the heat of reaction by considering the reactants to be at 298.15 and 1 atmosphere pressure. This is standard heat of reaction, what we will be finding out, and we will be using basically bond energy instead of heat of formation, right. So, we know the chemical reaction will be, right. CH4 plus this is oxygen, right? So, this will be CO2 plus water, right? And this will be basically to balance it, this will be 2, right? That means 1 mole of methane is reacting with 2 moles of oxygen going to the product of 1 mole of carbon dioxide and 2 moles of water. And um, now, if you look at what is CH? C basically CH4, CH4H, you know H, plus there are 2 O2, so O plus double bond and going to carbon monoxide O, right, plus HOH plus HOH. In this case, if you look at on the left hand side, that is a reactant side, right, how many CH bond are there? This is basically 4 bond. So, I can write down CH bond 4 plus how many O bond is there? 2 O bond and the reactant side and going to the product is basically how many bonds are there here, right. In this case, there are 2 basically 2 CO bond right and this is 2 o HO bond right. Now, 2 or 4 it will be 4 basically right this will be 4. So, now let us calculate for reactants right. the bond energies are 
r what it would be it would be basically 4 c h plus 2 o. So, if you look at the table right let me go back to the table the c h will be what c h will be 4 14 and o o what is o o is 4 98 right and then in the product what will be we will be using c o 2. So, we will be using this one 799 right and we will be using o h o h is basically 4 464 right. So, these data we are going to put into those uh, things or uh, use them and then find out what will be the this thing. In this case what will be 4 into 4 uh, 14 right plus 2 into 498 it happens to be 2652 kilo joule per mole right. Similarly, for the product the bond energy plus 4 O H 2 into 799 plus 4 into 464 it happens to be 3 4 5 4 kilo joule per mole. Now, the heat of reaction is determined as delta H R this is basically 298 and 0 right and this is nothing but basically reactant right minus the product that is 2652 minus 3454 this happens to be something 802 kilo joule per mole. Keep in mind that if you look at uh, earlier example right when we calculated heat of combustion what is the value can you look at your note minus heat of reaction huh? minus eight yes that means I got something minus 803 kilo joule per mole and that is from heat of yes. formation. Right, heat of formation from that data I got this delta HR basically heat of reaction. We are calculating from heat of formation, this is from bond energy. So, therefore, it is very close, right, but keep in mind that it need not to be very close to you know uh, each other, but there might be some difference, but that difference may be small. Here it is too small, negligibly small, but in some cases it may be 5 percent. 6 percent difference will be there right. That means, you can really calculate both the ways heat of reaction or the heat of combustion either from by using the heat of formation data or using the bond energy data right. So, this is the thing what I was uh, you know trying to tell you and uh, these things you most of you know, but only I am making you to recall and then reuse it so that you can use them in future whenever it is required and this is basically being used when you do not have heat of formation data you know then only you will use or when it is not possible to find out experimentally. So, now to deal with uh, you know this uh, kind of uh, chemical reactions and then associated heat liberation or heat being you know uh, used in the chemical reactions right depending on whether it is the exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction right. We need to use certain laws 
there are two laws which we will be discussing one is Lavoisier Laplace law which says that thermal energy supplied to decompose a compound into its element is equal to the thermal energy evolved during its formation from its element right what it indicates is it related to any law whatever you are aware it is basically conservation of energy that is nothing but your first law of thermodynamics right so uh, but this will be applied for the chemical reaction and in other words what he says the enthalpy of decomposition of a compound is same but with a equal sign that of the heat of formation right whenever you are having decomposition right for example o right o and o right is rea you know reacting going to the o2 that means this is basically heat of formation right and on the back side it will be also same thing right that is the point what is saying opposite sign right for example uh, let us say that carbon is reacting with oxygen to form carbon monoxide at a constant pressure right then what we need to do i mean we will have to basically uh, you know it is balance you can say uh, you know like one mole of carbon is reacting with half moles of oxygen going to the carbon monoxide of course keep in mind that carbon is in solid phase and uh, the oxygen and carbon monoxide is in gas phase and for this the heat of formation is 26.42 kilocalories of course, you must be knowing that uh, calories and the joule, right? One kilocalorie is equal to 4.18 kilojoule. Basically, one um, kilocalorie is equal to 4.18 kilojoule. <coughs> so, if you look at the reverse reaction, that is, carbon monoxide is converted into carbon and oxygen. then it will be same but delta hf is equal to 26.42 kilocalories but keep in mind that this is basically with a positive sign that's all right and uh, right so as i told that lavoisier laplace law is in agreement with the first law of thermodynamics as it is not possible for any chemical reaction to create some energy right or maybe destroy it it can only convert one form to the another right so that is a basically it talks about the first law of thermodynamics and this will be in case of basically an isolated system right can it be applied for other system right when there is a heat interaction then it is actually it will be converted to work or work will be converted to heat but here there is no work there is no heat being transferred so therefore you are considering as a basically isolated system right so and that is nothing but your first law of thermodynamics so how we use it uh, we already know but i am just trying to summarize it lavoisier laplace law enables us to write the thermochemical equation in reverse order the forward direction or the reverse direction heat of reaction will be same right okay so will this stop over here in the next lecture we will be discussing about another thermo uh, chem uh, chemistry law and that is known as Hess law right so we will discuss that in the next lecture thank you very much